says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Right here in these verses, there's another teaching that's out there that's absolutely false about this passage, where, once again, many times people have an agenda and they want to, you know, they, they twist the scriptures into meaning things that they don't believe. But you've, you've got the people out there that teach, like us, the way you get saved, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's what we teach. We teach that it's not of works. You've got another group out there that teach repent and believe. Okay? I just watched a video of a guy that was witnessing to somebody. And this guy that he's witnessing to is completely lost, very confused in a lot of things. But then he was just like, you know, he, but he, this guy explained his philosophy and he was familiar with Christianity and he didn't believe it. And, you know, and, and then he asked that guy that was the soul winner asked him, you know, what do you have to do to be saved? And he's like, well, you, you know, believe on Christ. And he said, no. And then he said, you have to repent and believe on Christ. Meaning, turn from your sin. This guy teaches that all the time. You know, you got to you got to stop sinning and believe in Christ. And what people do, they'll use this passage here to help prove that. Because notice it says there were many that believed in His name, but He Jesus did not commit Himself unto them because He knew it was in them. You know, they believed, but you know what? Jesus saw their hearts. They didn't really mean it. You know, they. It was clear they weren't going to turn from their sins. And when you pray and you believe in Christ, He knows if you really mean it. And if you're really going to turn from your sins, and if you don't, you know, if you don't, well, you might believe in Him, but does He believe in you? Uh, you know, you'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear some of those crazy things like that. But once again, it's just completely twisting what these mean. Okay, this is very this is actually very simple what it means when it says he did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify man for he knew what was in man. This passage is showing us the knowledge of Jesus, how he knew the hearts of man. This I I call this chapter Jesus Christ the miracle worker. Okay, we have him turning the water into wine there. I mean, right here, it, you know, John really focuses on the deity of Christ. And Jesus, he had the amazing ability that we see throughout the Gospels that he could see what was in the hearts of man. He always knew what they were thinking. When the multitude would come to him for questions, he always knew what they were really getting at. He always knew if they were looking for answers or if they were just trying to trip him up. He knew it. And so every time he was able to stump them. Every time he was either able to answer their question or if they were putting him in a situation, asking him an impossible question, he would. He would just give this wise answer that would just shut them down that they couldn't handle. And right here, it mentions how many believed. Now, did everybody believe there in that city? No, but many did. And I believe every one of those that did, uh, that believed, got saved. But here's the thing. When it came to the multitudes, were they not very fickle? Okay. And so while people are seeing these miracles, they're all kind of for him. And many that saw the miracles believed and those people got saved. And here for a while, you've got the crowd. While not everybody believes, they're kind of on his side. They're not mad at him. But what would usually happen after Jesus would go somewhere they would go and then people would start stirring up the multitudes. And Jesus looked at that crowd and he knew them. He knew that heart. And he's like, you know what? They're for me right now, but I'm not going to commit myself to them. In other words, I'm not going to put myself in their hands. I'm not going, I'm not going to stay here. Okay. I'm not, go, I'm going to move on and I'm going to go somewhere else because it was not his time to die. It was not his time to go to the cross. And Jesus knew because of his knowledge that he had, him being God, he knew if he stayed there, it would be bad for him. And we see that, how sometimes he would, he'd have to kind of withdraw himself. And he'd, have to, he'd have to get away because it wasn't time for him to die. 
And he wasn't going to let the people kill him until it was his time. And so when it says he did not commit himself unto them, it means he did not put himself in their hands. He protected himself. He kept away. Not he did not. It's not saying he didn't commit himself unto those who believed, but he's referring. It's referring to those multitudes because he knew all men. They're for me now, but it's only a matter of time, and they're going to turn on me. And so he got out while the getting was good. Why was why? Because he needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. This story is showing the knowledge of Jesus that he had. It's showing that God-like knowledge that he had. And so that passage is not at all teaching, you know, you got to believe in Jesus and he's got to believe in you too. Okay? That's just, that's just goofy. You won't find that anywhere else in the Bible and you won't even find it in that passage in the Bible.